Hello, this is SJ Talks in Life coming back at you with another video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Please and thank you. <coughs> I want to talk about the... I, I have a message that I want to deliver to the YouTube mommies sector. The YouTube mommy sector on here, here on YouTube. I'm not really targeting anyone specifically. Um... Um, I know there's three of them on here that uh, get talked about quite a bit on here. Um, they're quite popular on here. Um, but I'm not really targeting anyone specifically. Uh, just um, a message. Um, I don't know if they're going to look at this video or not. But that's actually, this message can be actually applied to all single mothers. Not just them. How about that? This message can apply to all single mothers, um, not just the YouTube mommies, but I'm also talking to the YouTube mommies too, but it can also apply to all single moms, all single mothers. Yep, yep. All single mothers can benefit from this message. Um, I was a single mother for many years. I've stated that many times on this channel. Um, um and I've done a lot of topics talking about single motherhood because um, I spent many years being a single mom. Um, I learned a lot. My years of being a single mother was a tremendous learning experience for me. Um, struggle, I struggled a lot. Um, went through a lot mentally, physically, and emotionally. And um, But I learned a lot, too, um, you know. I learned a lot. You know, I have two sons. My two sons are grown now. But I learned a lot uh, from that journey. So I think um, I have a lot of valuable advice that I can pass along to um, these younger single mothers coming up. Because, um, you know, where they're trying to go, I didn't already been. So, <laughs> um now, whether they listen or not, that's another thing entirely. But um, it's 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 some food for thought. It's some food for thought. You know, something for you to think about um, for women, for single moms to think about. And um, yeah, I think I think if women women can learn a lot listening to the older generations of women, listen to the, your older generations of women that done already done been down that road. We didn't already, where you trying to go, we didn't already done been. And so it is a benefit to, uh, it is a benefit to listen to the older women um, of your, of um, the older women that already done been through what we didn't already been been there. So this is, it's best to, um, Listen to the older women, you know, because we we do have a lot of uh, wisdom, um, and we know what we're talking about. Basically, <laughs> we did not really been there. So anyway, with that being said, you know, I wanted to um, <coughs> um, first thing if I can gather my thoughts. Sometimes I just need to write stuff down because. Um, a lot of things I can do off the top of my head, but if I can just write an outline out what I want to, the, the points that I want to uh, talk about, then I can, you know. Anyway, that's probably what I have to start doing in the future for future videos. <laughs> but anyway, I have to play it by ear. Uh, I, I was going to do this video about a week ago and got sidetracked. <laughs> so bear with me here. Bear with me here. Um, uh, first of all, um, I want to make the point um, that um, now, uh, excuse me if I'm all over the place. Um, I want to make the point. And I've actually made this point in other videos as well um, that when you're a single mother raising your children. Um, it's very, very important that you be careful who, what types of people that you expose them to. Um, and I've expressed this in other videos as well. Um, women have to be very careful. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, 
I suggest, um, of course, I'm an advocate for abstinence until marriage. Um, but sometimes it's best as a single mom um, to hold off on the dating thing, to hold off on it until your children are older or they're grown or whatever. Uh, a lot of women, it's hard for them to wrap their mind around that concept. I know when I was raising my kids, it was hard for me to wrap my mind around it. But I actually winded up doing that. Um, I actually, <laughs> you know, I um, dedicated my life to God. Um, and um, I just uh, stopped dating altogether. Um, and I, became, I did become a Jehovah Witness. And so I really... Um, and I just focused on myself spiritually, getting myself together spiritually, financially, mentally. And I focused on my kids. And <laughs> I, I think I don't, I don't have any regrets for doing that. Um, and then I started abstaining. I don't have any regrets for doing that because, you know, I got two great sons out of the deal. You know, I was I perfect? Uh, did I make a lot of mistakes? Uh, yes, I did, and I'm. Um, stay tuned. I'm, I'm coming to that part, but um, yes, I did. Because um, anytime when you're a single mother and you're raising children without the benefit of, if you don't have, if you don't have a husband, and they don't have a father figure in the home, whether that be in their biological father or a uh, stepfather, if they don't have that father figure in the home, and you're raising them by on your own, then something is going to be lacking. That's just the reality of that's just the reality of the situation. Something is going to be lacking. So <clears throat> um, there's going to be things that, because at the end of the day, especially particularly when you're raising um, males, a, a woman can't teach a, a boy how to be a man. So there's going to be a, a, a lot of things that's going to be lacking. And so you, you know, as a mother, you do the best. Uh, uh, if you're a loving mother, if you're a loving mother and you really love your children. I mean, you do the best you can um, with with what you with what you're working with. Um, you know, I just I came at the point in time where I just made God, uh, Jehovah God, the head of my household, and I just tried to do things um, according to His direction and everything the best I could, anyway. But um, with that being said, you know, I I know I can understand why. Uh, women want a mate when you're raising your, your kids you're a single mother and you're raising your children yes you do want to get married I know there was a time where I really wanted to get married um, you don't want to do it I don't know of any woman that wants to be a single mother no woman wants to be a single mother you do want to get married you do want a husband you want to get married I mean and those those that is that those feelings are natural um, um, it's not natural for a woman to do it by herself. It's not natural for a woman to be a single mom. It's not natural. It's not man natural for a man to be a single father. It's not it's because there are single fathers out here. It's it's not natural for people to raise children by themselves. It's not natural. It's not the it's not the um, the the normal uh, course of things the way things are supposed to go. So it, it's it's okay if. A woman has that desire to have a mate it's okay but the problem is when women you know women um, get lonely and everything and a lot of times when um, especially if you don't if you don't have that relationship with God um, women get lonely and sometimes they get into situations uh, with men and they're exposing their children to men that they probably shouldn't be exposing them to. Uh, just out of loneliness, you know, out of loneliness and wanting that companionship. <laughs> and then unfor and unfortunately, there's a lot of men um, that are that take, like to take advantage of single moms. Uh, they like to use single moms. They like to use them sexually, uh, use them for a place to sack up or use them for a place to stay. Um, they don't really want to invest. Um, um, they don't want a marriage per se. Um, and, and that's what 
single women have to, single mothers have to look out for. There's a lot of men out here that they just really don't want a single mother, but they just want to use single single mom. Um, I've expressed in other videos, those men are trash. They're trash. You know, they're, they're the worst in my book. I, I think if you're a man and you don't want to be with a single mother, then just don't be with her. Don't be with her sexually. Don't be with her... Um, in any way, form, or fashion, you know. But there are men that don't care. There are men out there that will use a single mother sexually in, or in other ways and without any regard for her feelings or her children's feelings. So, um, you know, God will deal with those men. But as a single mother, you have to be on guard on guard for those type of men. And you, you have to be careful to not allow those type of men to be around your children they don't need to be around you see not everybody is deserving of you know not everybody is deserving of your company I always tell people <laughs> it's a privilege to be in my in my company it's a privilege to be in my space it's not your right it's a privilege to be in my space you know I, I had a friend stay with me a few years back that's a long story. And I told her that. I said, because she had this sense of entitlement. I said, no, it's a privilege. If I allow you, if I open up my home to you, it is a privilege. That is a privilege. It is not a right. You do not have the right to be in my home. It is a privilege. So that's, you know, something that a lot of people don't get. You know, it. you know. I, and that's what I had to tell her. I said, it's not, you don't have the right to be in my life. It's a privilege for you to be in my life. And so, you know, that's the way you have to look at it. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, some men don't have the privilege. They, they don't deserve to have the privilege to be in the company of you and your children, you know, because they just ain't right. They ain't no good. And so that's where women have to be careful, um, to, and then some of these men, they be they be molesting kids, and I mean, you just have to be as a mother. You just have to be really, really careful of who you bring around your children. You can't let loneliness and wanting that having that need for companionship overrule your um, your common sense. Um, any loving mother that really cares for her children, um, you know, have to think about these things. You have to think of the the emotional well-being of your children. And so you just have to be careful who you expose your children around. You know, and I've said this many times before. I I recommend abstinence until marriage and um, taking the time to focus on your children, making your children number one priority. Because that's what I did, you know, making them number number one priority. That's what I suggest you know um because after when you have kids as a mother when you have kids um it's not about you anymore it stops being about you and what you want um they come first your kids come first i mean god comes first and then your kids <laughs> and then you so um they are your number one priority you know um, and they come before your need for companionship, your need for a mate. Uh, they come for, before that. And so you, you have to, and so many, there's so many mothers out here that don't understand that concept. You know, they let loneliness uh, override, you know, uh, their need to put their children first. And so you just have to do that, you know, as a mother. Um, there's... Uh, the, the, the chances of, of really securing a good marriage mate when you're a single mother is very low. I'm not going to say it's not possible. Anything is possible. I believe that anything is possible. It is possible. Is it very difficult, uh, particularly if you're a black woman? Yes, it is very, very difficult to secure a good, solid marriage mate that's going to be a good husband, a, a blessed husband to you and a good father figure for your kids. That's very, very difficult. Um, uh, it's very, very difficult to find that um, because a lot of men don't want to take on a woman um, with 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 children. I mean, um, that's just being realistic. Even if he got kids himself, he got his nerve. Um, they don't want to take on the responsibility of a woman with children. Um, 
it, it takes a special type of man to come in and, and, and um, be a, a blessed husband and a good father figure, solid father figure for to children that is not biologically his. That takes a really, that takes a special kind of guy. Um, and those men are rare. Those men are rare and they're hard to find. It's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. <laughs> and so... Um, most of these, most of the time, you run into these trash guys out here that just want to use you for sex and money uh, or a place to stay, and so those are the guys that you have to look out for, and those are the guys that you 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 should not, under any circumstances, bring around your children, you know. But women get so lonely, single moms they get so lonely, and it's hard to do it on your own. Um, it's hard to do it on your own, and it's it's emotionally draining doing everything on your own and so that that natural instinct is, is yeah you want that mate and everything but then you gotta and that's where where prayer that's where having a close relationship with god comes into play forming that close relationship with god when you form that close relationship with god he will help you because he helped me he will help you he will help you to endure um, that's one thing that God does for us that uh, when we draw closer to him, he helps us to endure. And he will help you to endure all those times and, and, and help you with your children. And um, But but you got to draw closer to, to God. There's, there's no other way around it. You got you to gotta get that close relationship with him. Um, so he can help you. So he can help you to endure that. Um, he did it with me. I'm a living testimony. He did it for me. You know, but you got to draw a closer relationship to him. And then another thing, you just got to be OK. Uh, a lot of women, they, they just don't they're not uh, OK with being with them by themselves. I mean, then, you know, you got to be um, happy with yourself. Some some people, men and women are guilty of that. You just don't want to deal with yourself. You know, um, you got to learn to, I know I did a whole video talking about that. You got to learn to be by yourself. Learn to be by yourself, man. Uh, learn to enjoy your own company. I enjoy my own company. Ooh, I enjoy my own company, I tell you. <laughs> my, my son, older son, he likes to come out and hang out with me sometime. And I enjoy hanging out with my older son. <laughs> but then after a while, I'll be like, uh, man, uh, how about my, uh, my me time? <laughs> so I'm just at the stage of my life where I enjoy my own company. I do. I enjoy my own company, and um, and that's where and that's where you got to get to that place to where you enjoy your own company. And sometimes it's a situation to where these women need to heal anyway, and so it, it it's it's okay to be alone for a time. See, we live in a society where uh, women, you know. The message is always sent to women that you're nothing without a man. That's not true. That can be not further from the truth. Stay tuned. I'm going to do a whole nother video talking about that. That's a whole nother video. That is not from that. That can be further from the truth. Um. And and and, and society wants us women to believe that, but you know, women having that mindset sometimes puts you in bad situations. On top of being lonely put you in bad situations with men trust me i what i i know what i'm talking about and then when you get into those bad situations with men it causes a lot of emotional damage and um and when you're raising your children um as a single mom you got to have some type of emotional stability and if you're emotionally damaged it's hard to really be an effective mother for your children and so that i recommend that just being alone for a time and focusing on your spiritual growth, your emotional growth, um, being focusing on your kids and, and just getting them through and, you know, getting there and they're getting, making sure they're getting the education and everything and um, just focusing on you and your children and abstaining and all that. That's what I highly recommend. <laughs> uh, is it easy to do? No. It's very difficult to do. But it's worth it. If you love your children, it's worth it. 
So that's one thing right there. Another another point that I wanted to make was <laughs> I really didn't want to make this video too long, but uh, another point that I wanted to make is that goes back to what I was saying earlier. <laughs> being careful of who you exposing your children around. Um, I know with my two sons, a, a, a lot of things don't manifest until they get older. With my son, a, a lot of times when kids go through stuff, they're not gonna they're not gonna say they're not gonna say too much, um, and they really may not be really cognizant of it when they're growing up. It's when they get grown. You know that old saying, it all comes out in the wash? You ever heard of that saying, it all comes out in the wash? Well, when you're raising kids, it all comes out in the wash. <laughs> Meaning that when they become adults, <laughs> they will come back and tell you all the mistakes that you made as a mother. <laughs> Trust me, believe me what I'm saying. Believe me what I'm saying. A lot of my son, a lot of a lot of things that my the mistakes that I made. Like I said, I made mistakes. Um, both of my sons, um, my oldest and my youngest, came back and told me how they felt about different things growing up. It's like my youngest son <coughs> said that one day he said his childhood sucked because he couldn't celebrate his birthdays. Well, I, I was just trying to serve God and do the right thing. I mean, um, holly, er, holidays are, and birthday, birthdays are in fact pagan. You, you got to do the research. Google is free. That's the only thing I can tell you. So um, at the time, I was a Jehovah's Witness, and I was I stopped celebrating birthdays. And um, but the the mistake that I made was is that I didn't replace it with something else. You know, I I didn't I took away uh, I didn't celebrate uh, his birthday, but I could have done other things. I could have celebrated him in other ways. I didn't have to necessarily celebrate his birthday. And so that's the mistake that I made. And so he came back and expressed to me that he said his child, he, he said that he felt like it was a lot of things he couldn't do because I was a witness. And some things was a protection and he didn't understand. And you know, he talked to told me how that how much that affected him. It, it, he did go through a point to where he was. He started uh, get got a little rebellious and started sneaking around doing things. I found out that he did some things that I didn't know that he had done. You know, but so that's yeah. So that and then my oldest son, um, because um, my kids are ten years apart. Um, I didn't have a, a, a really huge support system in raising my sons. So uh, a lot of times I, I had my oldest son watching over my youngest son. Well, I didn't feel like, um, you know, it was only at times when I, there was times when I had to work. Now, I did have, in fact, have child care. But then there was times where I had to, I felt like I had to leave my youngest son with my oldest son and um, my oldest son and then I was I was in my mind at the time I was like trying to give my oldest son some responsibility I wanted to keep him off the streets I didn't want him to be in the streets I wanted to give him some type of responsibility I didn't want him I didn't want him out on the streets and getting into trouble and getting arrested and this and that and the other being a young black male so I figured if I give him some responsibility then you know that'll keep him off the streets and all that so that was another reason why I did it well <laughs> he said that he he just he just resented the fact that um he you know he thought he was stuck with his little brother a little bit too much you know and so all they came back and expressed all these things to me um and sometimes I just I had I didn't have I felt like at the time didn't have a choice but to um um and I, I kind of, I don't know, I kind of, my oldest son was kind of like a father figure. If, if I know that's weird in a sense to uh, my youngest son because he was, there was a 10 year age gap. And so, um, you know, 
he I gave him a little and, uh, and, and to make a long story short I gave him a little bit too much responsibility and that's another thing when you have older children um, don't put those younger uh, um, um, like when you got older older children younger children don't put the younger children off on the older children too much if that's a that's an issue that's a problem um, and that's a lot a mistake a lot of mothers make is that uh, putting the responsibility of the younger children off on the older children. And I, I did it one too many times um, instead of, because uh, sometimes the older child does have to uh, watch the youngest child, but um, I did it a little bit too many times as I was going to school, I was going to college, and I was working at the same time. So, um, you know, I did it. I, I didn't think I was doing it that that often, but I, I did it a little bit too many too many times by this time by the time my son oldest son became a teenager then my youngest son was like you know my youngest son was five years old my oldest son was like 15 years old so you know it was easy sometimes to just you know leave my youngest son home with my oldest son and you know and then I've, I've in my mind I'm like okay I'm trying to keep him off the street that'll give him some responsibility <laughs> keep him off the street, keep him out. I mean, he still winded up getting into some mischief, and I'm not going to go into all that. But, uh, but yeah. But that's another thing, you know, when you have older children, don't don't dump the younger children off on the older children on a consistent basis. In other words, don't let your older children raise your younger kids. You know, it's your responsibility as a parent to raise uh, your all your all your kids it is not your uh, your older children's responsibility to raise your younger kids and so like i said they came back and t expressed these things to me um and, and and talked about how it affected them uh when they were growing up so that's another that, that was another point that i wanted to make is that when um it, it'll all come out in the wash so a, a lot of things won't manifest until they get grown. And when they get grown, they'll come back and tell you all the little mistakes that you made as a parent. <laughs> and we talked about it. And, um, you know, my sons, you know, because I, I, I showed my sons a lot of love. I showed them a lot of love when they were growing up. Um, both of my sons, you know, they think the world of me. I think the world of them. So, you know, they showed me grace. They, they um, thank, thank God they showed me grace and they were able to forgive me and you know, we talked about it and I apologized um you know I said well you know I'm sorry guys I just do did what you know I thought was the right thing at the time <laughs> and sometimes when you're young you only know what you know and you you in your mind you, you your sense of reasoning you know looking back I I can definitely see how I could have done things differently but um you know, sometimes, you know, when you're younger, you know, you, you, you are in a, you're not, you don't, you're not the same person, uh, in your, in your, in your twenties than you are as a child and you're not the same person in your thirties, so forth, so and so forth. You, 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 each decade, you're different, you're different. So, um, sometimes when you're a certain age, you only know what you know, you know, so, but it, it, like I say, they, 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 they it, a lot of times, you know, um, growing up, they may not say nothing or it may, they, it may not even, they may not even be cognizant of the fact that certain things are affecting them until they get older and then they get older and then they realize, um, they're hurt from it or traumatized, whatever the situation is. They will, as adults, they will come back and they will express that to you. So just be on the lookout, young mothers. Be on the lookout for that, you know. Um, be aware of that. Certain things that you're doing now, that's why mothers have to be, be conscious of what they're doing around their kids. Or what they, how you talking to your kids and what you're doing to them. Or who are you exposing them around? Who you... What types of people you're bringing around them, what you're exposing them to, how you talk to them, all that, all those things, because it'll manifest. And then when they get older, <laughs> and if you got multiple children, 
<laughs> well, sit back and have a seat and take it all in. <laughs> when they all get to be adults, they're going to they gonna lay it all on the line. <laughs> and they will definitely tell you, because uh, that's, that's what, what my sons... They, they they will definitely let you know. It's like, you know, well, I felt this and that or this and that and the other. Because, um, you know, we, we, especially we grew we raising kids, you know. We know, you know, we get in the, uh, we get into that discipline mode. <laughs> you don't, uh, you better do what I say or you whatever. You get into that discipline mode. <laughs> Sometimes children don't have the freedom. I tried to let my sons express themselves as they were growing up, but it's going to be certain things that, they're gonna. They're not gonna have to feel like they have the freedom to express to you, um, out of fear that you may get angry at them or you might go off on them or whatever like that. But when they get grown, they feel like you know. Of course, I'm an adult, and and so I feel like I can get things off my chest now, and so that's healthy. That's I'd rather for them to get it off their chest than to hold it in, <laughs> and, and so. Um, so this, this giving you guys, you mothers that heads up, it, it will all come out in the wash. Whatever you're doing, whatever your mistakes or whatever, your children will definitely, when they become adults, they definitely going to, going to let you know what's up. <laughs> and so that's why it's very, very, very important that, uh, what you expose them to, um, um, the types of people that you allow around them, <laughs> some type of bug on my phone and how you talking to them all that all those things are important because um sometimes we can hurt we can hurt our children and not realize that we're hurting them you know and then we go through things as being single moms we go through stuff mentally and emotionally and sometimes you know uh it affects our children if we're going through things mentally and emotionally Sometimes it will. It ain't no. It ain't no. Sometimes you know, it will affect your kids. It will. Whatever it is that you're going through as a as a single mom, it will affect your children. And so that's why it's important to have that close relationship with God, you know, and everything like that. So it's just. I'm sorry if this video is a little long, but this is a message that I wanted to get across to the YouTube mommies and to all the single mothers out there raising kids. It's a very, very, very difficult journey. But you can, there's things that you can do to smoothen the transition, to make the, the, uh, the journey a little bit easier on you and your children. Um, either way you slice it, it's going to be difficult, you know, because it's just, it's not natural being a single mother, you know. But yeah, take it from someone that's already been there, done that. Um, just you know um looking back in retrospect on things and all that but yeah it's important information so with that being said if you like this video give it a thumbs up hit me up in the comment section um and go ahead and hit the subscribe and the notification bell until the next video be very blessed <laughs>